There is a picture of Mike Monsoor that circulated the news after he died. It shows Mike shrouded in a greenish-yellow smoke, emerging from the chaos of combat. If you knew Mike, or if you know his story, that picture speaks for Mike. And this is what that picture says. Mikey was the prototypical Southern California kid, had a sense of style, fairly big kid, about 6'1", 210 pounds, but was just extremely quiet. He was kind of a jokester. Every time you see him, he'd have kind of like this uh, grin on his face. So you don't know whether or not he was scheming on something or if that was just his kind of, you know, Southern California laid back nature. Mike Monsoor was a new guy in uh, Task Unit Bruiser, and he was just a hard-charging guy. He was one of those guys with such a great attitude, always put out, uh, always had a, a smile. He had this kind of crooked smile on his face all the time, and uh, you could just count on him for stuff. When we first got word that we were going to be the Task Unit, TU Bruiser, we were going to deploy to Ramadi. We instantly knew, each and every one of us, that we were going to war, and this was finally our moment. could own two thirds of the entire city. Task Unit Bruiser was in the thick of the fight. And for nearly six months, in almost daily, dangerous and violent urban combat operations. From the second we stepped down, we were in contact with the enemy. But regardless uh, of being rattled, it didn't uh, deter the guys from putting their kit back on and getting back out there day after day. At a time when so many guys were burnt out, had, had had their fill of dangerous combat missions, Mike Monsoor was so eager to jock up in his combat gear, lock and load his big Mark, Mark 48 machine gun, and get out there with his Delta Platoon brothers and get after it. So this was our last uh, operation for the deployment. You know, we were a week out from going home. It was myself and Mikey and two of our other fellow SEALs, and then we also had four Iraqi Jundies that were with us. We were so close to going home that when we stepped off on that final mission on September 29th, 2006, we were proud of what we had accomplished, and it was a hard-fought battle, but we were seeing progress. At some point, we don't know exactly you know, how they got there or where, you know, how they were able to maneuver and sneak up on us, but a uh, grenade did end up coming over the, over the rooftop. And uh, the, the being behind Mikey, what I remember hearing was grenade, and the next thing I know was the explosion. And so he made a very conscious and uh, deliberate, selfless decision. Looked uh, my direction, yelled grenade, and jumped down on it. All I could say is that, you know, I'm alive today because of, of what Mikey did. By him going down on that grenade, you know, I now have a family, I have three kids, and I owe that all to Mikey. I would have loved to see Mikey become a father, because I know he would have been a great father and a great husband. He's the steel that we all strive to be when we're on active duty, going to war. And on behalf of a grateful nation, we will present Michael Munsour's family with the Medal of Honor. I am Michael Monsoor. I love my country, my fellow SEALs, and the men fighting alongside us. We are fighting a determined enemy, but we are strong. Our strength is our brotherhood. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines fighting together. 
a brotherhood bound by sweat and blood and tears. Many of our brothers have fallen, but we fight on for the men to our left and right. We fight on. I am Michael Monsoor, and I am ready. Forged by faith and family, molded by belief and brotherhood, I have lived life to its fullest, and I have no regrets. We can't bring Mikey back, but we can live in his memory, in his image, and uh, try to be the best human beings that we can be. And it's just an honor honored to, to have known and worked with a guy like Mike Monsoor. The moments that I did have with Mikey, I cherish every day. Um, I, talk to, I talk about him to my kids so they understand. For the United States of America, I christen thee, Michael Monsoor. May God bless this ship and all who sail in her. <laughs> I think if Mikey saw the ship, you know, it's cutting edge advanced technology and I think, like I say, with Mikey in the platoon, he was always at the front, you know, leading the way and the, the way the ship is designed, is it's, it's going to be leading the way in the future. There is no way that a steel and iron ship can ever replace the flesh and blood that was Michael Monsoor but it seems there can be no more fitting memorial to him than a warship. A warship that proudly bears his name. And in this ship and in its crew, Mike's spirit will live on. Through this ship, Michael Monsoor will still represent the very best our country has to offer. He will inspire the crew just as he inspired his teammates. And just as Michael Monsoor did, the USS Michael Monsoor will go forward willingly into harm's way and will stand tall without hesitation or regrets and face down evil and malevolence, saying boldly to the world, I will defend. That is Michael Monsoor.